everybody. It's tequila time with Art and Paramount. And look to my right. I'm, I'm back. Yeah, like, back. A bad, like a bad disease, Gab came back. You know, yeah. there's certain viruses you just can't stamp out. Yeah. That's <laughs> one you of them. You get a vaccine, but it lasts only for six months to a year, and they come back. <laughs> yeah. So Gav is back in town last weekend, as you'll see tonight. Uh, we taught a little workshop in the Olympics. Gav's going to be here and through the end of June. We have so many workshops we're going to do back to back to back to back. There's a reason that tequila plays a role in all of that. So wave everybody and go finish your ban uh, hey, banana nut. Hold on, hold on. I have a question for Gav and Art. Art, be honest. Do you miss Gav or do you miss Gav's margarita when... When we started all this, he used to make margarita for the tequila time. What do you miss more? Be honest. Gav. I, I think it's the banana bread. I miss Gav. <laughs> you know, when you have traveled and worked with somebody for as long as we have, it's like family. It's definitely yeah. family and you definitely miss him. So I'm really happy for me, mm -hmm. unhappy for his wife and kids, and more importantly, the two dogs. Um, <laughs> you know, they have to do without Gav, but I got him now for the next five months. Gav, welcome to Seattle. Okay, enjoy the tequila time. Okay. <laughs> All right. Now let's really talk about Gav. Yeah. Let's talk about the real Gav. Really nice, but he smells really bad. <laughs> no. Anyway, how are you doing, Paramal? I'm doing great, man. I'm I'm doing fantastic. I actually, Art, I went to Astoria um, last weekend, and I know you've been traveling too. So I just did some photography following in your footsteps, some abstract work, and uh, man, what a place. I'm uh -huh. heading there tomorrow because we've got a workshop coming up on Wednesday through Sunday. So yeah. So, uh, have, so tell me, what have you been up to, Art? We had one of the wettest, coldest workshops in some 45 years of teaching last weekend on the Olympics. And I'm gonna show some photos from the workshop and that will be my little slideshow tonight. Cool. But my God, it was so wet. You know, it's early March. I wanted to teach a, a workshop in early March in the Olympics, largely because the leaves aren't out. And so the beautiful fine lines. Remember, we scouted twice yes. this winter. So we found some nice locations. And then Gav and I went over early on Thursday just to scout a couple more because we found out that the Saldek River Road had been closed because there was a dumping of snow. And we've had more snow in, the, uh, in both the Olympics and the Cascade Mountains more than the last 10 years. And so snow was low, a lot of roads were closed, a lot of trails were closed, mm. but we still found enough places to keep everybody. Nice. So it sounds like things are back in back in motion again. After a long wait, you know, with COVID times, things are um, yeah, I, starting. I hate, yeah, I would hate to give the false uh, confidence to people that have not been paying attention, but everybody on our workshop had either had full uh, vaccines or had one vaccine. Hmm. And there were a couple young people like Libby and Gav who had the latest uh, COVID test negative within 48 hours of us teaching our workshop. So everybody was confident and, uh, and we went out to dinner. I, you know, I don't think I needed to teach anything last weekend. I think people were just happy to resume things that they were com comfortable with and familiar with and going out and using their cameras, being around other people, at a restaurant, all those things were so reaffirming and reminding people that things are opening up fast and that um, this will be a far better year than last year. Yeah, thank goodness for that, thank goodness. I mean, it's been a year and thank goodness that, I mean, I like I said, uh, a bit of my story, I went to Astoria and I didn't book a uh, hotel before I went there. I thought, you know, the last minute I'll book some hotel and everything was sold out. Uh, which was like, wow, people are traveling. Now, the good thing is they are traveling with care. They are still wearing masks. They are integrating their lives, you know, while being realistic and whatnot. But it, it was good to just see that people are trying to come back to their normal while taking precautions. So I'm, I'm glad to know that you're seeing that with your workshops as well. That's, that's yeah. good. To know. Yeah. Well, I mean, before you met me and I started uh, working with you, let's be clear, you were living in the tent under the freeways. Yeah, I mean, thanks to you. Yeah, I, I made it. All because of me, now I you're living it. well. 
I made but, it. But I, it would qualify as you if you couldn't find a hotel in Astoria. I mean, you could go back to your old ways. You know? I could have, I could have. But now I'm used to the fine life. What to do? <laughs> <laughs> I, you know what I love about you, Paramal, is you go with all the insults. <laughs> you roll with it. You're so fun. Thank you for being who you are. Welcome, welcome. Anytime. You're welcome anytime. By the so, way, Art, before yeah. you start sharing images, a reminder to everyone, uh, we have Earth as a Witness tonight, a little later than expected, then generally we, we do, it's at 9 p.m. Pacific. There's two reasons for that. One is a true reason, one is a made up reason. The true reason is our guest photographer is from Dubai. He's Egyptian Syrian who lives in Dubai. So that's morning time for him. He wants to send his kids to school and then he can focus. So that's the, that's the reason, that's one reason. And the second reason is the topic is astrophotography called heavens and earth. And it's a bit of a spiritual topic as well, because he's a, he's a very spiritual person. He's going to talk about what it means beyond the kind of, you know, the, the technical information of astrophotography, but he's going to talk about just some amazing images he has taken of the various nebulas and the galaxies right from the Arabian deserts. So it's going to be an interesting topic. Uh, be fascinating. So it'll be fascinating. And maybe that's why I thought, you know, maybe a fake reason to do it at nine o'clock would be that it's nighttime. Let's see the stars at nine o'clock. So. Hopefully everyone can tune in live on oh, Facebook uh, all, and YouTube. All, all my fans are like 90 years old. They'll be in bed for two hours by then. <laughs> there you go. There you go. They can watch it on their big screen TVs from bed. <laughs> With the lights off. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Do you want me to uh, show this slideshow? Yes. Let's do it. All right. All right. So screen share and slideshow. And play. Oh my God, I'm getting actually. You are a pro. And uh, you can't see that little screen. Uh, nobody can. Okay, got it. Hey, so you know, uh, you've seen in various incarnations of um, Mount Constance or the brothers. This is literally the view I have if I look west out towards the Olympics. This is early morning, and we've had an, an amazing number of beautiful sunrises. So and that also shows in this image about that and this image of the brothers, how low the snow is. Oh, yeah. So the Olympics are an allure for me because I grew up uh, about a mile from here, always watching the sunrise and the sunsets over the Olympics. So I've always, the Olympics are my mountain range to go to. I love the Cascades and Mount Rainier, but boy, the Olympics are what the mountains I see virtually every day if it's clear mm. but on this particular weekend the mountains were not out but this was a, a new location up the, what they call the Kalawa river which i've never really gone up looking for uh locations but because and you and i went up there a month ago and now i've gone up there and really scrutinized it because we realized the saldek river was closed because mm. of snow yeah, so I love this kind of a shot. And this also implies why we were there, because it's early enough in the spring that the leaves are not out. That permitted a shot through these moss covered branches to the rapids below of the mm -hmm. Kalawa River. Beautiful. Now, it's true that we scouted this out on Thursday and found these locations because you and I didn't see this when we were up there. But we never got there with the class because we had so many other places that took up our time. Yeah. So here's the here's the a group of uh, intrepid souls, some ten people, all decked out in their various uh, rain gear and umbrellas. And it was this particular day was the coldest, wettest day I've ever taught a workshop. Everybody's it's got rain pants on, rain tops. We got big golf umbrellas, and yet. It was cold, it, it just a couple hundred feet above us, it was snowing, and yet their attitude was great because they were out and not stuck at home. I'm surprised that, you know, you guys were so prepared since it never rains in Seattle or the Olympics. So that's, that's uh, some bold planning. You know, virtually the only time I've ever shopped at Walmart was to buy these big umbrellas. So yeah. when it looks like the weather's gonna be bad, we bring the umbrellas with us. So everybody's got an umbrella. That's cool. But it is a challenge to use a tripod, a umbrella, a camera, and you just have to become kind of perseverant uh, in doing that. But 
you know, and there's Gav. Look at he looks like some sort of frog in that. Uh, <laughs> he does. He does. Make it green, and he'll he'll go off as a frog. <laughs> <laughs> he came all the way from warm Thailand, and now he's freezing his guanacos off in the cold and the rain. <laughs> but he had actually a good time as well. Yeah. So uh, new locations, I've never been down this road before. We scouted that on the Thursday and then we met everybody on Thursday night uh, at our meet and greet. And then the next morning on Friday, we went out after a lecture and started working in the forest and beautiful. Oh, uh, wow. Yeah, you know, you and I photographed the alders when they didn't have the moss, you know, very clean lined, almost looked like birch or aspen. But in this forest, it was a much more older forest of alder and they're cloaked in moss. And it's just, you know, I keep on referring to when I teach my abstract Astoria, they, it almost has a Jackson Pollock feel to it. Yeah, I love this image. I, I, I just said, right, I had a stressful day at work. Just looking at this, I just feel very calm and zen. Beautiful shot. And uh, just other versions of that same forest. You know, I talk about looking for things that are, would break the uh, pattern of the trees, you know, and so those smaller trees at the bottom of the frame actually aren't distracting, but there were some other trees that were like really strong diagonals that were taking your eye out of the frame. Talk about avoiding those during the class. Mm. So, you know, everybody sets up their camera, you kind of look through it, you make a few comments, reframe it, talk why you would reframe it. And uh, you go, and this is a this is Fred Gray's photo, and I've known Fred for 50 years. We were friends uh, back in the climbing days in the late 70s, early 80s, and here he is out on the workshop with us, and he's joining us in Africa, in Sedona, uh, in Moab, and down in Carmel. So we've got Fred and his lovely wife Linda, who helped carry out my antlers out of the Olympics, and people that watched earlier incarnations of Tequila Tuesday saw the antlers in my living room. So Can I make a plug? If, if, if they ever, Fred and Linda, if you guys are watching, if you find an antler, one more antler, like please keep one for me. I'd love to get one too. Just if there's only one antler, then the, uh, the elk is walking in circles. <laughs> Whoa. I just thought of that. You, I, you know, that, that, up. that tequila really brought out that intelligence. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, the alder, the broadleaf maple, the Sitka spruce, cedar, hemlock, Douglas fir, these are all uh, very dominant trees on the uh, Olympic Peninsula, but along the rivers that, and there's so many rivers that come flowing out of the uh, Olympics, it's the uh, tree that grows along the river's edges. And so hemlock are beautiful trees. And look at this. This was a real find. Oh, beautiful. Isn't that nice? It's beautiful. We're driving back after being all wet and we're driving back to Lake Crescent and just past this tiny little road path and this uh, these new alder trees. And again, they remind me of birch trees or aspens. I love the road going down that path and everybody, you know, everybody enjoyed this moment. So we had a great time. Beautiful. And then we went back to Lake Crescent and uh, it provided a drier moment. And this is not the shots we took last weekend because you can see leaves and the trees, but I didn't, I was teaching. I didn't have the time to take the pictures, but this is where we work with this little stream entering uh, Lake Crescent. And mm -hmm. this is one of the shots uh, from one of our participants, uh, Jim. Uh, and I forgot how to pronounce his name, but it's D-E-F-E-Ba. -E so forgive me, Jim. I'm, uh, I remember you instantly. You, Jim wasn't particularly smart. That's how you remember Jim. But <laughs> his name was- Just Ignore art. He says that about me too. I mean, if he says that about me, Jim, <laughs> such a high IQ, don't worry about it. <laughs> I think Jim did a great job. He rendered this image into a black and white I really like the uh, photo because all the lines are kind of filling out the frame. He was paying attention in the lecture. And yeah. this is another shot from John and John Stokum from um, um, 
Spokane. He came all the way over from Spokane Drove. First time we've had him in a workshop and just beautiful lines of these uh, alders with the beautiful lake crescent as a background. It may not be. Is it advancing for you, Paramount? I, I still see that image, uh, previous image. That's why I thought Fred took the same image, similar image. Okay. Thank you, advanced. So do you see the waterfall? No. On your image. Oh yeah. my God. You know, uh, you gotta let me know if it, you- It's it, hard because it's delayed slightly, so. Oh, okay. I don't know until- Yeah, it takes about 20 seconds, so I thought it's coming up. You know, I have no idea. We've had this in the past. Uh, I have no idea why suddenly the slideshow stops. Try resharing. That's okay. It happens. Try resharing. Okay. <clears throat> In the meantime, you know what? This was about our jokes too. So it's okay. Okay. <laughs> you are so comforting. I've got Kyle. By the way, while you're, while you're doing your thing, I'm going to say, hey, Fred, man, I Fred is watching and he's going to uh, watch for antlers. In Idaho, Fred, I'm 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 coming. If you find it, I'll be there. You know, Fred has been watching our presentations the whole year. So it can't be that bad, I guess. In that case, can you see this image now? It's uh, started screen sharing. No, I don't see it yet. You Call like Kyle. Wow. People, hang in there. Try resharing again, Art. We are. I think this is Kyle's doing. Totally. Blame it on the little guy. Kyle was wanting a raise, and I said, well, maybe next year. And he said, OK, if that's the way you want to play it. <laughs> See how your technology works. Yeah. Sucker. <laughs> what? I can't believe that this is happening. It's just because we use a third party app to stream you a couple things, so it does not flawless. Yes, and now play. Yes. You can see? Yes, I can see. What's it look like? I can see some trees at the top and a waterfall from the from the bottom going down meeting. Oh, oh no, 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 that's the wrong slideshow. I've got a shot of a herd of elephants. No, no, this oh. is all right. So yeah, Olivia, I was just joking. <laughs> anyway, so as I was saying, this is one not shot during this workshop because this looks too bright. But more importantly, it was shot in a previous year when the leaves were out. Um, but John, and I still can't pronounce, or Jim, I can't pronounce his name still, but oh, this is a beautiful. lovely shot. You can see this, right? Black yeah, I can. White. Beautiful. Okay. Love the black and white. All right. Now this is John and John came out of uh, Spokane and uh, isolated these beautiful branches against the, the beautiful uh, gray blue uh, Crescent Lake. And this is what we talk about, you know, filling the frame, keeping it simple, playing with the lines and the, you know, the beauty of those lines of this yeah. branch. Yep. And this is a, a shot of where the branches meet the placid surface of Lake Crescent. I love the abstraction and you have to kind of analyze these kind of photos for perspective. And the intent is to make it a little more confusing. So people have to stay with the image, scrutinize it. And the longer people have to kind of look at an image, the more you're hooking them in and uh, communicating to them. Mm. Simply yep. put, if it's a Mount Rainier, easy to recognize, you kind of process it quick and you're ready to move on. But a shot like this, you want to know the angle, perspective, point of view. Yeah. Then we went into uh, the forest. Uh, the And this time around, you know, often when I'm taking people into the Olympic rainforest, the whole rainforest, it's sunny. And, you know, you want clouds, you want drizzly conditions, misty conditions. and. Mm -hmm. And boy, did we get it on Saturday. Yeah. And not to the extent that people were miserable, miserable. It was just light rain this time. And then it stopped raining and it still remained even light. So we had great conditions for our uh, Saturday out there in the Olympic rainforest. Nice. And you can carry a little bit of tequila or whiskey in the pocket, you know, just to keep some warmth during the workshops. You're <laughs> always thinking, never resting. Never, yep, all yep. of it. <laughs> now, and at this time of the year, again, without the big broadleaf uh, leaves on these trees, 
you can see into the forest and convey a sense of depth much more effectively. Mm, nice. Yeah, and you can see the, uh, the people here, uh, some are wearing masks because they hadn't been uh, uh, gotten their second shot yet. And the ones that did are kind of walking and enjoying the freedom of not having to do that. So, you know, we were very COVID compliant and very respectful for people that uh, were, and when people would walk by, we would uh, put on our masks. So, you know, we're out in the forest, we're having fun. It is wet and dripping, but we were able to get our shots and look how beautiful this was. Beautiful, oh, this is lovely. Isn't Who took it? this photo? Pardon? The, whose photo is this? This is a beautiful photo. Uh, well, I, my modesty would not permit me to tell you. Who <laughs> this is a really good photo. Oh, as opposed to the other ones. Oh, my God. <laughs> this is a great photo. I, think. I just lost all my participants. Thanks, Paramount. <laughs> <laughs> you know, honesty has a price. What can I say? So this is another one of the shots that I shot. This is seven different verticals that I stitched together. Oh. And so an image, like the benefit of stitching images together is then you've got a file that's so big you could, you know, fill a public space with a large, large print. Mm. But you can see the conditions are so perfect for the rainforest. Yeah. And this is one of Gav's Lightroom or uh, uh, iPhone shots just of people walking and photographing in the forest. Happy people. Yeah, and I talk about lines. In, in this image of young vine maple, you can see how the lines are kind of uh, really serpentine. And, you know, and so the lines connect and then I crop this into a panoramic. And that's what, you know, we also teach. So, yeah. you know, we never go into a workshop trying to, shoot the most cliche panoramic images. We are really challenging our participants on seeing what a lot of people would walk by and mm -hmm. uh, with a, a nod towards the lines, the patterns, the textures. Beautiful. So yeah, we, we had a great time in the forest. And oh, really lovely. complex. Look at all those lines. Complex, beautiful composition. Yeah, and you know, we I, I talk about opposition when uh, various angles of the branches oppose each other the unit the unified effect then is a balance mm. and to say it a different way if all the lines were kind of leaning one way your eye would follow that right out of the frame mm. so having all this complexity of opposing angles actually bring a balance to the image and and this is different art than just randomly taking photos of a lot of branches it, oh. if you're randomly you don't quite get the balance and the harmony yeah, absolutely you have to work you have to look you have to kind of move your body and change the angle of the uh, perspective and lens choice so all those things we talked about in the lecture and then we reiterate it in the field Beautiful. And, you know, some people will look at it and say, oh, it's just a bunch of trees and moss. Uh, you know, I want the big view. But really, the things that we try to convey in a workshop like this, as people move forward in their own trips, they'll have in the back of their mind some of the things that we've imparted to them with. And invariably and always, their work starts to really improve. Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. And look at this one, all, you know, it's such a be beautiful study of the curved lines of the broadleaf maples and just that it's a, like an ethereal world and everything's soft. And uh, as we exited the forest, we saw a herd of elk. Uh, and so mm -hmm. when you think about this forest, it's a great forest because you got black-tailed deer, you've got elk, you got owls, you got black bears later in the year and uh, mountain lions that come through, but it's a very gentle environment. And none of those animals have ever attacked humans in, in uh, Mount Rainier or in the Olympic National Park. So, you know, wild animals are staying wild because of good habits uh, in the campgrounds nearby. Yeah, I'm just gonna read out Deborah Day's comment. This image is very intimate, the previous one. I, I, I completely agree because you have this one branch very close by, there's a nice depth to it. You feel like you can almost touch it, and there is so much, you know, welcoming in this scene. Thank you, Deborah, for that. You know, 
it, you have to walk through the forest and really scrutinize it and make a lens choice. We're using uh, tripods, cable releases. We're doing it the proper way for an environment like this. Mm -hmm. Conversely, there are times where I just tell everybody to go crazy, to take the camera off the tripod, to take exposures five seconds or longer and start to move and have the freedom to do and try that with blurred motion. But mm -hmm. this is very, very uh, um, consistent on doing it properly to get yeah. those sharp images. Yeah. I'm starting to slur the words. So I think this brand of tequila is doing what it should be doing. That's good. Because as you know, Paramal, I get nervous talking with you. Yeah, I know. Yeah, you do. I have that presence. Uh, you know, it's just overwhelming your yeah. aura. <laughs> All right. Well, enough bullshit. <laughs> but it, it, I love this environment. I mean, I love living in Washington because in a two hour drive, you can be in the Northern Steppe Desert where there are no trees. Uh, you can be in the high glaciated mountains. You can be along the wild ocean or you can be in an old growth forest or in a rainforest, which is very different than an old growth. So mm. all these different environments are within a two hour drive of Seattle. Oh, wow. Look at the scale of this. Yeah. This is a beautiful shot, actually. Well, actually, if you look up in the, to the center right of this frame, you can see a shape of, uh, of a, a thick clump of moss. And so the next shot is just simply a telephoto shot of that. Mm -hmm. So that's the part of the thing, too, is to use wide angles, to use middle range lenses, to use telephotos, to stitch uh, verticals together and make a panoramic try different perspectives and by all means turn around and look what you've just walked through because sometimes the best shot is right behind you. Hmm. Beautiful. Oh, nice. This is a beautiful shot again by John um, Stockham from uh, Spokane. And it's just a beautiful study of uh, turkey tail fungus. And again, it's a different perspective, you know, you put on your macro lens or your close-up uh, lenses and zoom in on these uh, very beautiful studies. And this is a gal that came up from Houston. Uh, remember, Houston was clobbered by the cold and the miserable misery of uh, a late uh, winter storm. And uh, Stephanie Rudd came up from Houston and enjoyed herself. She was, you know, I was wondering, oh, is she going to be Here's a single lady that came by herself. She was giggling and smiling the whole time. She's watching. Yeah, you know, but you she know, watching? is she single? She's single, very attractive, but giggling the whole time. So I'm thinking she was smoking dope or pot, <laughs> you know, behind one of those big leaf maples. I think she was like, uh, well, anyway, you know, Stephanie doesn't listen to a word I say, but this is a beautiful uh, shot, very soft. It conveys the textures of the rainforest really effectively. Cool. So, you know, we shoot the big wide angles and then we uh, ultimately go for the really close ups, just little ten, uh, you know, tendrils of moss hanging down. Then we, uh, on that same day, we wound up, we, we have a dinner in Forks. And most of my clients are probably big fans of, um, what's that movie? Oh. Come on, quick, Libby, you're that age. Twilight. 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 Forks. If Forks. I was drinking tequila, I would come right up with <laughs> Twilight. But <laughs> anyway, we had dinner in Forks and then we went out to Rialto Beach and had a great time. It was, you know, again, early March. It's, you know, just literally one day after the end of winter. And so the winter storms are still brewing on the wild Olympic coast. And we uh, find these old logs that have been out there for easily a hundred years. And in the beauty of the, of the lines of these logs, we abstract subjects. This is Lisa Rennie and she's a great friend and participant. She travels with us all around the world and she's getting into the details. She found this log. 
Mm. And, uh, some of the work she's done. This is a, another one of our friends, uh, Gretchen. And Gretchen shot this beautiful study of line and movement of the eye. And then Lisa shot this shot. Oh, uh, nice. Yeah. It, it, they're very different. You know, one's very different. white and dramatic. This one is uh, colorful and almost got the lines of some of the Northwest Coast First Nations artwork in it. Mm. Gretchen's so uh, online. Yeah. Gretchen yeah. is watching online right now, live and uh, Gretchen is always watching and her and her husband now are competing. And, you know, her husband was just kind of a pack carrier uh, a couple of years ago, and now he's shooting great shots. Mm. And so it's nice to see a couple that have raised uh, great children. And now photography is something that just cements the relationship. Very nice. Yeah. I mean, it's, I mean, before that they were fighting, they were like, <laughs> heading off to divorce court. And now I brought them together through photography. Just like any other marriage. Yeah. <laughs> Libby is just laughing. Okay. And this is Fred. This is Fred. Uh, we, we pile these stones up. And you know, it's funny because originally I used to pile these stones up uh, when I was a younger guy. And I would always not look at them when I was photographing the wild coast, but in fact, they become beautiful sculptures. Mm. So that's part of the lessons is to shoot these piled up stones that Gab piled up in this case and, and shoot them from five different perspectives and, or lenses. And, you know, look at what Fred's doing. Yeah. And this is uh, Gretchen's shot. And I love it. You know, it's a different perspective. You got this out of focus human in the background. And uh, so it's really nice to see what Gretchen Shepard does with her images. It's beautiful. And this is, oh, that's Heather's photos. Oh. Heather Johns is the first newbie to us. And she did great. And she was out there in the rain. She's a climber. Her uh, a boyfriend is a photographer and climber. So getting out there in nature, but aren't, isn't that beautiful? Beautiful. It is very nice. And, and I, I, yeah, black and white looks great. Even yeah. this. Yeah. And we finished with Gretchen Shepard's photo of these same rocks. You could just see how they expose differently, but they're still, both of them are equally strong. Mm. So yeah. I was really happy with the group because for us, it was the first workshop we've shot in a long time. I'm going to stop sharing so that you can see my lovely face again. Yeah, and, great. Yeah, so I mean, it, it's, for me, it's rewarding. Uh, if you have a bunch of people coming together, we eat together, we uh, laugh, I insult everybody, and then we get out <laughs> in the forest. I mean, that yeah. goes without saying, right? And so... We go out in the forest, out and along the ocean. We learn a lot and it's uh, intense three or four days. I think your workshop details, if you said two options, one is just the workshop, second is workshop with insults. I think people will clearly pick the latter. Yeah, you know, and uh, honestly, to be truthful, at the end of the workshop, we do a critique. And I think that's the most beneficial at the entire workshop because you know, people understand that I'm full of uh, uh, like false statements. If they've been watching Tequila Time, yeah, you know. They know. So yeah. they, they, they already understand who they're dealing with. Otherwise they wouldn't have signed up. Yeah. So everybody's on board. We have a great time. We find the best restaurants available to us. We have great meals and a great time. And then at the end we critique and people go home with the knowledge of what they've taken in and uh, you know, it's highly rewarding for uh, Gav and Libby and I when we do this. No, and I can I can even tell. I can see uh, a huge turnout tonight, particular time. All these students, workshop attendees, I can see they are be they are watching this live, and um, lots of credit belongs to Art, Gav, and Libby. I, I get it. Like I can see the turnout is very strong tonight uh, because I can clearly feel the vibe between you and your workshop attendees. Um, Insults is a strong word. It's the banter. And yeah, I, think, not insults. I think, I think what I, I mean, I know you, we know each other for 15 years. And what I can say is that the banter is fun and engaging. It never comes at the expense of learning actually, because when it comes to learning, you are a serious 
that's oh, yeah. faster. Like you are in in it, you know. Yeah. So that's that's good. That's that that's good to know. No, I think that's first and uh, the most paramount. If people have invested time and money and effort to come, uh, hoping beyond hope that when they leave, nobody's regretting the time they spent with us. That they've learned something. They yeah. have a good time. And you you can have fun and learning at the same time. Yeah, yeah, that's great. That's great. So, Art, you had some questions. Do we have time for any questions? I think we probably do. Great. Yeah, Libby. Oh, Libby, you want me to read them? I can read it. Okay, Libby's in the background. Caroline, while you do that, uh, Libby, I, I'm just gonna read out. I like this comment. Uh, Caroline, who also attends a lot of both of our witnesses, and she's very poignant with her comments. And her point was. Art will save marriages, eat, do photography, drink tequila. It's a full package. Full package. Full package. <laughs> <laughs> you may want to change the word package. Okay. Well, I, I added those words. To be fair, those were not her words. Uh, I, yeah. It has different connotations. To okay. It. Got it. I'm just a very innocent being. I don't know what you mean. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. Okay. Let me questions. <laughs> okay. This was from a few months or a month and a half ago or so, but. From Mitch Darby. Hi, Art and Paramal and Libby and Gabrielle and Absentia when Gab was gone. My question goes all the way back to episodes three and four. As an architect, I particularly enjoy those two episodes and wonder with all the books you have done, why haven't you done one on your home and garden? Mm. So everybody can hear that. Well, you know, it's interesting um, that we had a professional photographer and writer come to the garden this year and they photograph the garden and they're gonna include it on in on a book on Northwest Gardens. And so um, we can put that on our website when it's published this later this year, but I'm totally in agreement. I have been talking about winter in my garden and I have still not shown that photo. Maybe next week, I'm gonna be in Sedona, Arizona on Tuesday of next week, but if I can make it and do a tequila time, I'll show the winter shots because they turned out beautifully in, you know, we had this huge uh, snowstorm that hit uh, about a month ago. Mm -hmm. And I got up early and photographed it right in the blue hues of morning. I've got warm lighting under the trees and that combination was beautiful. And then later in the day, I photographed again and it started snowing. Mm -hmm. And so I'm, I think it's a great series of uh, demonstrating how you keep looking at different angles. It's a teachable little slideshow and I wanna show the winter in my garden. Great. But to respond to that statement, I think someday I will do a book on living like an artist mm. because not only it's the garden, but it's the interior and what I've collected and how I've surrounded myself with every view I have, except west towards Kyle, uh, it's uplifting to me. Mm. Kyle, you know, that was a joke, right? That was a joke. Kyle's preparing the <laughs> lawsuit right now <laughs> because I already I insulted him earlier in the day. <laughs> but at any rate, uh, so yeah, thank you for that. I want to do uh, a small book on living like an artist because I think, you know, people that take pictures, sometimes they live in houses that have none of their work up on the walls. Mm. You know, it's like just re reinforce what you love yeah. Show yourself with photographs. If you can afford it or artwork, it doesn't have to be expensive artwork, but fill yourself with beauty yeah. as much as you can. Right. And it keeps your psychology high and operating on a very positive level. And I do that. If I've got acquaintances that are total downers and all of us do, you say, Hey, how are you doing? Oh, and they give you a litany of things that are ailing them and much of which are just pissing and moaning. I don't talk to those people very often because I don't want to be dragged down. Yeah. You know? So I'm very careful about my own psychology. I've got waterfalls and the sound of water, uh, the trees I work on, the art I collect and not a lot of it is expensive. It's cheap art, but it's beautiful ethnic art from around the world. You know, the cr things I create with photograph is all part and parcel why I seem so amazingly normal. Hmm. 
it's wonderful you know libby <laughs> libby libby laugh you know i wanted to make a more profound statement like which i usually do you know that's me you know I, i've missed that in the past <laughs> it is you know honestly um that episode i remember this was back in march when we started tequila time and i think it was episode 3 or 4 when we did the japanese garden tour oh i think i'm so embarrassed by that one i was so freaking drunk and we were staggering <laughs> through the garden i think i fell over a couple of times but you remember <laughs> that do you i do remember and i also remember you said you want to not be in the waterfall that's why you designed it in such a way i don't know if you remember that but anyway the the reason the, the point i wanted to make was you know the live like an artist underneath that statement i also feel is that you are very true to who you are you know who you are you like who you are you're comfortable in your skin and you manage your energy by surrounding yourself with people and things that reinforce the positiveness in things that's what i've seen about you and this is why i'd say even even now you're still very active and not sad and whether it's covid or not whether there is no workshops or not you're still ro- rolling in creating things which i think is a big is a is a huge deal whether it's pathways to creativity tequila time earth is a witness workshops like and this is covid you know i uh, i think the key word there is creative and i think that if people never take a workshop that's fine you know if they don't have the economic means or the energy or whatever but for them creating whether it's music cooking dance poetry any of the artistic disciplines by all means pursue yeah. quilting quilting whatever it is whatever it is do your thing creating keeps one getting out of bed and that is the key to i think health and longevity yeah is to have a reason to get out of bed mm very true in your case it's pretty ugly women Uh, I, all women are beautiful. <laughs> oh, that's good. That is good. And you have saved my ass on that one. Yeah, I did say that. I definitely don't want to sound like the completely. governor of New York. You owe me big time on this one. <laughs> you owe me big time on this I one. I should have said it's really ugly beings. And in your case, I think it's the collie that you own, that dog. <laughs> no comments. Okay, Libby, save <laughs> art from art. Save art from art. Next question. <laughs> All right. I think we must be done. <laughs> Actually, this is the first tequila I've had in a couple of weeks. So I think it's maybe hitting me a little harder than it should. <laughs> Clearly. Well, actually, the people that took the workshop know that I had a margarita at dinner on Saturday night so they already know me to be a liar. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so I think we've done it. You've done it. Okay. Good. Uh any last words Art? We are we'll talking you up. in a couple of hours because we're in a couple of talk, hours. We're going to be talking with our friend from uh Dubai. Dubai 9:00 o'clock astrophotography heavens and earth. It's going to be really special. So tune in everyone and see you soon. Thanks Art. Thanks Libby. All Thanks, right. Thanks Carmel. Bye. Bye.